question relates to the use of the ideal gas law. It has P equals NRT. Uh, the scuba tank with 20 liters of capacity is pressurized to 2,800 pounds per square inch at 30 degrees Celsius with pure oxygen. What is the density of oxygen under these conditions as predicted by the ideal gas law? So uh, we have <coughs> P equals NRT is the ideal gas law. The best way to know how to solve these kinds of problems is to look what, for what's given. If they give you a problem like this, uh, they're usually going to have to give you four of the variables, and then the fifth one has to be found by you. If they don't give you four of the variables, then you can't solve the problem. What, we, what we're told here is the pressure, which is uh, 2,800 pounds per square inch, the temperature, the volume, and the value of R we know is 0 0.08205. So we have P, V, R, and T, which means we need, we need to solve for N. So we rearrange the equation to solve for N, we plug in all the values, there might be a little sticking point here for the conversion factor between 2,800 pounds per square inch and atmospheres. You should be aware of the fact that one atmosphere is 14.7 pounds per square inch. So 2,800 divided by 14.7 is going to give you the pressure in atmospheres. It works out to about 190, so you'll know you're on the right track if you get 190. Multiply by the volume, divide by the value of R. Another classical error that students commit when doing these calculations is they enter the numbers in their calculator wrongly. When you do this, you're going to say this, divided by this, multiplied by 20, divided by 0 0.082057, divided by the contents of this bracket. A lot of students will get the, will be tempted to multiply by 273.15. That's what gives them the wrong answer very often. If it's below the, uh, it's, if it's below the fraction sign, you have to divide by it. And if you want, uh, if you want to multiply, then it's got to be all bracketed as one thing. And that whole bracket has to be divided as the denominator. At any rate, the value of the number of moles that you get is 153. When you find that you have 153 moles of oxygen, you multiply by the molar mass of oxygen. Don't forget, oxygen is a diatomic gas. And moles times grams per mole cancels to give you grams. You have 4,900 grams of oxygen. And then you enter it into the calculation for density. Density equals mass over volume. 4,900 grams of oxygen contained within a 20 liter tank, 245 grams per liter is the density of the oxygen under that pressure. On the next question, we have an adaptation of a question from a Brown's textbook. It's from chapter 10, page 430, one of the practice exercises. Uh, I ask, calculate the difference in pressure predicted by the ideal gas law and Van der Waals equation for a one mole sample of carbon dioxide confined to a three liter cylinder at zero degrees Celsius. And you're provided with the two values used in the Van der Waals equation. They're obtained empirically, meaning experiments have to be done on different gases. Different gases have different values of A and B. First, we solve the equation for the ideal gas law prediction. P equals NRT. Solve for pressure by isolating P. Enter all the values. Again, we use 0.08257 for liter atmospheres. The temperature has to be converted to Kelvin. so at zero degrees Celsius, you still get 273.15 Kelvin. Divide by the volume, and you get an answer of 7.47 atmospheres. I kept all the decimal places in the calculation so to avoid truncation error. So doing the same calculation using the Van der Waals equation, we enter all the values again. Notice B is here and A is there. Don't forget the square of the volume uh, in the second term. So this becomes 9 liters squared which cancels with the liter squared of the value for B, I'm oh, sorry, A. And the result is 7.579 minus 0.398 recurring. So this term accounts for the uh, decrease in volume due to the fact that the gas does have a finite volume. This term accounts for the uh, decrease in pressure as a result of the fact that the uh, gas molecules actually have a certain stickiness with each other that reduces the pressure somewhat. So the pressure that we get as predicted by the Van der Waals equation is 7.18 atmospheres, which I forgot to write, 7.18 atmospheres. And uh, I, I subtracted the lower number from the higher number predicted by the ideal gas equation, obtaining 0.291, and I, convert, I took the liberty of converting it to torr. So the final answer should be 221 torr if we use three significant figures. You. I don't know why this I see.